pages 305 to 312, the last video, electrolytic cells and Faraday's law. Electrolytic cells are used to force redox reactions to proceed in the non-spontaneous direction. So when you have an EMF, that's a negative value. A typical use of electrolytic cells is for plating out materials. For example, this reaction is not normally spontaneous. But suppose we wish to force this reaction to proceed as written to create more zinc metal. How could we do that? An electrolytic cell uses an external power supply, a battery, or an electronic device to provide a potential voltage that is larger than the cell potential potential of the voltaic cell. The external power supply provides the force to push the reaction to proceed in the de desired direction. The power supply is designed to pull the electrons from the copper electrode and push them towards the zinc electrode. The positive terminal of the power supply would be connected to the copper electrode and the negative terminal would be connected to the zinc electrode. Because the voltage of the external power supply is greater than the voltaic cell potential, electrons are forced to flow in the opposite direction in the electrolytic cell. So notice that normally the positive end would be the cathode and the negative end would be the anode. And normally we would flow from fat cat, from anode to cathode, which is from the negative to the positive. But in this case, we are forcibly moving from the positive to the negative. Electrolytic cells use an external power supply to force electrochemical reactions to go in the desired direction. Electrolytic cell key points. Just as in voltaic cells, oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction at the cathode. Electrons flow from anode to cathode just as in a voltaic cell. Electrons flow from the negative power supply terminal in the attached electrode. The signs of the anode and cathode in an electrolytic cell are reversed from those in voltaic cells. The anode is positive and the cathode is negative. Ions in solution flow in the same direction in both electrolytic and voltaic cells. Here's another example. This electrolytic cell uses molten sodium chloride to plate out chlorine gas. So we'll take molten sodium chloride, which is going to yield sodium plus ions, and well, sodium metal and chlorine gas. And then our half reactions for this, because here's our plus one and minus one, this is zero, this is zero. So the half reactions are going to be that chlorine is the oxidation or the Leo part of this reaction since the oxidation number increases and the sodium would be the Ger part of the reaction since the oxidation number reduces. And so here are the half reactions down here. These reactions do not take place spontaneously as written. The power supply is forcing the reactions to occur in this direction. Electrons are pulled from the electrode attached to the positive terminal and pushed toward the electrode attached to the negative terminal. Notice that just for, as for voltaic cells, oxidation occurs at the anode and reduction occurs at the cathode. Calculating the minim minimum power supply voltage. The two half cell reactions for the above electrolytic cell are, for sodium, the reduction potential is negative 2.71, and for chlorine, the reduction potential is 1.36. If we do E cell of GER minus LEO, we get a negative 4.07 volts. The cell potential is negative. Makes sense. Sure, we knew in advance the reaction as written is not spontaneous. That is why we use an external power supply to force the reaction to take place. The cell potential is negative for this non-spontaneous reaction, but adding a power supply with a voltage that's greater than 4.07 volts forces the reaction to be spontaneous. Faraday's Law. Imagine the flow of water in a garden hose. The rate of flow of water in gallons per minute is analogous to electric current in amps. The force of Force or push on the water inside the garden hose is analogous to the electrical voltage or electromotive force where it's being forced through and the current is equal to the rate of flow and the voltage is the equal to the push force. To calculate the number of moles of product plated out in an electrolytic cell, we need to know one, how many moles of electrons were supplied by the external power supply, and two, how much product is produced from one mole of electrons. The connection between the power supply electrical values and moles of electrons generated is known as Faraday's law. Each electron flowing through the wire has a charge of 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. A mole of electrons has a charge of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd electrons per mole times this value up here, which is going to be equal to Faraday's constant. When there are many electrons flowing through a circuit at a fixed rate or current, the total charge passed through the current is charge is equal to the current, which is in a unit of amps times time, which needs to be in a unit of seconds, 
and moles of electrons is equal to the, this charge times 1 over Faraday's constant. Note that an amp is charge per second or coulombs per second. The units in the above equation give moles of electrons equals current times time times 1 over Faraday's constant. Current is in the unit of amps, times in the unit of seconds, and 1 over Faraday's constant would be for every 1 mole of electrons we have Faraday's constant in coulombs. Amps is the same thing as coulombs per second, and then time second times 1 mole of electrons over Faraday's constant. Notice that your coulombs cancel, your seconds cancel, and we're left with moles of electrons with this calculation. So moles of electrons can be found from this equation. Moles of electrons equals the current times the time times 1 mole of electrons over Faraday's constant. Use the balanced redox equation to find how many moles of product are produced from each mole of electrons. For example, the electrolytic cell that plates out chlorine from molten sodium chloride has the half cell reaction chloride yields chlorine plus 2 electrons and 2 sodium plus plus 2 electrons yields 2 sodiums. Notice that 2 is the number of electrons in this reaction. The balanced half cell reaction tells us that 1 mole of chlorine for every 1 mole of chlorine is produced from two moles of electrons. This is the way you could write this relationship, basically like a mole to mole ratio, where you say for every one mole of this, we have two electrons. Example problem 20.100. How many moles of chlorine gas are produced from a 15 amp current passed through a molten sodium chloride electrolytic cell for two hours? So first of all, remember that our time should be in seconds. So I'm gonna convert my two hours and for every one hour there are 3600 seconds and so the total time is 7200 seconds. We are given a, a current of 15 amps and we know that it's passing through an electrolytic cell where molten sodium chloride changes to sodium, metal, and chlorine gas. Plus one, minus one, zero, zero. And we're focusing on chlorine which has the half reaction, Cl minus, and it should be 2Cl minus, is going to yield Cl20 plus 2 electrons. And we care about this because there is a 1 to 2 ratio between the chlorines and the electrons. So my equation is moles of electrons is going to be equal to the amps times the seconds times 1 over Faraday's constant, 96,500. And when we do this math, we get 1.12 moles of electrons. Then, if I want to find out how many moles of chlorine are produced from this, I'll take 1.12 moles of electrons, do a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. For every two electrons, we have one mole of chlorine. And so this is going to be equal to 0.56 moles of chlorine gas.